Athens by Mr. Amster. Before you begin, please make sure that you have a sharpened pencil or pen and a highlighter. Some key things to think about before you get started. The polis is also known as a city-state. In ancient Greece, the polis was the center of all life. There were numerous polises or city-states throughout Greece. Salon. His reforms helped start democracy, and although during his time they were unsuccessful, they would lay the foundations of what we now know to be democracy. Cleisthenes. He created the first constitution from the work of Salon and helped start the first democracy in Athens. Government. In Athens, all citizens took part in the assembly. There were 6,000 members that had to be present for it to take place. If there wasn't, slaves would have to round up the necessary numbers and they would dip red paint on their robes to shame them. And you guys thought you got in trouble for skipping class? Now, this is really one of the few jobs they had and they only had to show up every 10 days. Not a bad gig, huh? You gotta show up to work every 10 days. That's it. And they voted on the laws proposed by the council. Everyone had a right to speak. And they used a water clock to time the speakers. I think some of you wish Mr. Amster had a water clock to time how long he could speak, right? And the council was a member of 500 members, and they met daily. They were randomly selected. They had to be 30 years or older, and they only could serve for a two-year term max. But it was only a one-year term, and they would get randomly selected. They didn't believe in voting. They believed that voting would only be people that would pick the people that were the most wealthy, and that's not what they wanted. They wanted the best, and they believed that everybody who was on the assembly had the ability to be a member of the council. And they suggested new laws. They helped make the laws of Athens. That was their job. And then they would send it to the assembly to get voted on. Please take a moment and highlight assembly. 6,000 members present. Met every 10 days voted on laws, everyone right to speak, council, 500 members, met daily, randomly selected, and that's all. If you are still writing, please take a moment and pause the video. Otherwise, let's keep going. Economy. It is the way a community or region organizes the manufacture and exchange of money, food, products, and services. In short, it's what makes a country run. Now, the Athenians economy was based off of trade. And since they live near the sea, what does that mean? They had a big harbor and they traded with, with people all over the Mediterranean. They bought and sold goods, even slaves in the Agora. What's the Agora again? If you said marketplace, you're correct. What's another word for marketplace in Egypt? That's it. It's a bazaar. Please write that down.
Now, they had coins made, and they believed it would make trading easier. They were made out of gold, silver, and bronze, each with different values. The front had Athena on it because she was the patron goddess of Athens. On the back was an owl, her patron animal. Please take a moment and highlight based on trade, coins, bought, sold goods, the ago, uh, and just Agora. And circle with your highlighter, bizarre. If you are still writing, please pause the video. Otherwise, we're going to keep going. Education. Democracy, they believed, depended on having good citizens. They believed that the combination of sharp mind and healthy body meant you were well-educated. Can't just be all bronze and no brain or all brains and no brawn. They believed it was equally important. And thus, they had physical training to them was just as important as book learning. Boys and girls were both educated, but very differently. Please take a quick moment here and highlight democracy dependent on having good citizens. And highlight that. And highlight that math equation. Sharp mind plus healthy body well educated we're gonna continue on with education until the age of six or seven boys were taught at home by their mother or a male slave there were no public schools so everybody had private tutors or went off to private independent schools From 6 to 14, boys went to school. They learned reading, writing, arithmetic, and literature. Kind of sounds familiar, doesn't it? If you're not sure what arithmetic is, it's math. Now, subjects were read aloud and had to be memorized. They read the stories of Troy. Remember what those two books are about? you said the Iliad and the Odyssey, you're correct. Now, why were they read aloud? Because books were rare and very expensive. They're not lucky like you guys, where books are cheap today, or you can just download them to your Kindle. Sports were taught, including wrestling and gymnastics. If you're listening to this, make sure to ask Mr. Amster what, the, what gymnastics really means. Ugh. They learned how to sing music, sing songs, play instruments. At 18, they began their military training. And after their service was done, the wealthy men studied with more private teachers who taught them how to debate and speak in public, and help them to become public leaders. Girls, on the other hand, most don't learn how to read and write. Sorry, girls. They did, however, help their mothers around the house. They learned to cook, clean, spin thread, and weave, weave cloth. Some learned secret songs and dances for religi religious festivals. And they were married around 15. Please take a moment 
and highlight no public schools, books, rare and expensive, learned reading, writing, arithmetic, literature, Wealthy men taught to debate, speak in public, public leaders become. Highlight most did not learn, read or write. Taught to, uh, and highlight cook, clean, spin, thread, and weave cloth. If you're still writing, Please pause the video. Otherwise, let's keep going. Women and slaves. Despite the fact that they would call themselves a democracy, only men are considered citizens. And women had fewer rights. Women could not inherit land or even own property, much property at least. One job that was available other than being a mother was becoming a priestess. As for women, most don't get to choose their husbands. Their greatest influence was in the home. They'd spend their days managing the home, raising the children, and are rarely let, allowed to go out alone. Now before you say, well, that's unfair, it's how it always was. And while it might have been unfair from our perspective, they believed that raising the children was an important task, and it still is. Just look to the tree at the end of that hallway. If you want to be successful, children are always the future. They spun, they weaved, and they thread, and they supervised the slaves, if they could afford them. And they educated their daughters until their marriage, when it was their job to start a family and start again. Does anyone have a high school sister? or older? Can you imagine them be, having to be married at 15? As for slaves, most people own at least one slave because they're, and while they're, because they're expensive to own a lot more. They were either born into it or prisoners of war. And some are actually very highly skilled. If the mother wasn't a good mother or she was very wealthy, they would run the household. They tutored the children. That meant they were taught to read and write. They became craftsmen, farmers, and factory workers. And they could work for the city as clerks recorders, scribes. The worst job, though, was silver miners. Ten-hour days in a cramped tunnel 300 feet below the ground. Ugh. It lacked air, and you were whipped if you stopped to rest. Ugh. In short, being a woman and a, or a slave in Athens was not the best job. Please take a moment and highlight only men were considered citizens. Women could not inherit land, much property. One job, priestess. Greatest influence, home. Most people owned one slave. Some were highly skilled. Worst job was a silver miner. The end.